where the BNP succeeds is where Labour retreats. When Labour advances and is on people's doorsteps, knocking on people's doors, then the BNP retreat. But do you think that Labour have done enough to get that message out that they are willing to tackle immigration, they are willing to you know, do what's necessary to make sure that the country isn't flooded and too, too full? Uh, because the BNP have been able to jump on the back of something, haven't they? And, and their, their prominence has only come about in the last few years. They, they have been able to jump on the fact that we've had people come from the EU coming here uh, in particular... But, you know, immigration was on our pledge card and, and our points-based system was on our pledge card. It's something we go out and talk to people about on the doorstep. I'm sure there's more we can do to get their message across. But fundamentally, I think most people don't really want to vote for the BNP. They want to know we understand the issue and they want they, to know that we're talking about the issues in their lives. How do I get a job for my kid? How do I get a house for my kid? Um, are you going to protect my kid's school? They're, they're the people I think, they're the things I think people really care about. Well, Tristan Hunt's opponent, Simon Darby, has gone on record as saying that this was a Labour orchestrated uh, mission, if you like, to bring foreigners in so that they never receive, uh, never return another Tory government. Is that something that you would reject? Uh, I think it's sort of awful. I mean, I think it's a ridiculous and awful thing to say. Uh, I think we should talk about immigration, but we should talk about it in a balanced and rational way. Uh, I think those comments sound, frankly, sort of ridiculous, like a ridiculous conspiracy theory. Let's talk about the reaction that you're getting on the doorsteps and your, your colleagues are getting on the doorsteps. The reaction that you're getting, is it, is it pointing towards a Labour victory? I think it's pointing towards two things. That our vote is hardening up uh, because people realise that the stakes are very high, uh, but there are a lot of people who haven't decided yet. There are going to be, in the next 10 days of this campaign or so, uh, it's those people who haven't decided, the undecideds, uh, who are going to decide this election, and also the people who might come out and vote Labour or might stay, choose to stay at home. And our job is to get those people to come out. I think it's a funny thing, this. If people had known more about what Labour was going to do before 1997, I think they'd be more likely to vote for us. I think if people knew what a Tory government would mean for them, they'd be far less likely to vote for them. People don't have a sense enough at the moment, in my view, about the Tory threat to our economy, the Tory threat to our public services, the Tory threat to tax credits, the Tory threat to Sure Start, all of those things that people value, and our job is to get that across to people. Well, the Tories are making out that the, the rise in the uh, national insurance contributions and things like that are going to damage this country. Why is it right that Labour do that? The, the, there's, two, there's two things we have to do. We have to sustain the recovery this year, because that's, it's got to become established, because this year we know the recovery is fragile. Next year we've got to start cutting the deficit. That's what the Tories have been going on about for the last couple of years. Now, it's right that we should have to raise some taxes in order to do that. Most of the tax rises are focused on upper-income people. The, about 60% uh, of the tax rises are paid by the top 5% of earners. Uh, but we've also had to raise national insurance. That's the way we get to say, which the Tories are not saying, we'll protect school spending, we'll protect health spending, and we'll protect spending on policing. Now, I think people want us to protect spending on those things. Now, it is true that people are going to have to pay a bit more in national uh, insurance above £20,000, people earning above £20,000, uh, to make that possible. But I don't believe the Tory idea that this is a threat. Uh, to the recovery. Uh, the truth is the Tories have a completely incoherent position. They say they can cut the deficit faster than Labour, uh, they can cut your taxes, and somehow they'll protect services. And frankly, people know that it doesn't add up, I think. We'll talk about a hung parliament as well, and, uh, you know, uh, that seems to frighten the heck out of some politicians. Why should it? I think a hung parliament, we haven't had it since 1974, have we? Um, so it would obviously be an unusual result. You know, it'd be first time for 35 years or so uh, that we've had that result. Look, again, it comes back to my point, which is I think you've got to fight the election to win every vote. That's what we're doing. I don't actually think the electorate at the moment want to hear about the result of the election before the result of the election is in. I think they're going to be very fed up with politicians like Nick Clegg, who've basically been choosing who his partner is going to be in government before the, the results actually come in. I think let, let, let's have the election and then let's deal with the consequences of it. Well, you're here to support Joan Wally, uh, Tristan Hunt, Rob Flello. Why should the people of Stoke-on-Trent go out and vote Labour at this election? Well, in Joan Wally and Rob Flello, you have people who have been incredible fighters uh, for their uh, constituencies. And I know from being a minister uh, in, of energy and climate change that both... Joan and Rob care deeply about people in Stoke. They fight the Stokes corner, whether it's on education, whether it's on energy prices, whether it's on the issues of climate change. And then, and I think absolutely, you need them to be fighting for Stoke. And then you've got Tristram Hunt, who's a new candidate. I think he's someone of deeply held values. Uh, he's chosen to come here. He's going to exploit his contacts. He's going to exploit his contacts for the people of Stoke. Uh, 
Uh, I'm here to support all of them. Uh, he wants to absolutely do all he can uh, for his community and the community he hopes uh, to represent. And in the end, you've got a choice between Labour MPs and Conservative uh, MPs, and you've got a choice between a Labour government and a Conservative government. And every, every Labour MP that is not elected makes David Cameron more likely. And I know that David Cameron would not serve the interests of the people of Stoke. Thank you.